All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, because everyone is on the fucking internet nowadays, so it really doesn't matter. Welcome to the Ed Namrock Podcast, and joining me today, tonight, whatever time of day, day it is in another fucking country, I don't know, is my BFFFF times 30. I mean, I can, whatever. I've known this guy for, I think, 100 years, even though we're both the same same age, but uh, my friend, my buddy, my brother, Roger, Mr. Roger. Yo. What's up, man? Hey, man. What's up? Now, first of all, you've been bugging me to freaking do this crap for oh, like well, fuck, man. Dude, eight months now. Okay, you, you, you're you telling me that, the, okay, so for those of you listening, Roger has a retail job, and I know, I, I feel his pain, so Roger's been working like 30 days straight or some bullshit like that. Um, hey. Well, what the fuck? Like, are you working because you requested it, so you're getting more money? That no, type of dude, shit. Right, no, because they're they're fucking doing changes. You know how it is, man. Yeah. When there's changes, they're like, oh, we're gonna move this person to this location. We got this person's gonna get fired. Or which is which is always which is, which is always fucked up because you're like taking somebody else's hours that just yeah. got let go, and you were probably pretty tight with that person. We all know what that feels like, so. Well, I'm, I never met the guy, so I didn't. I don't really care. Okay, cool. Uh, he was at another location. No harm done. But no, because we took our our manager is now going to manage two locations, and we need an extra key holder, and we don't have that, so our hours are like stacked upon each other. And I just finished a freaking nine day run without a day off. That thing. That's the whole and, shit about re- yeah. the the whole shit about retail. I mean, you and I have been working retail for I think half of our lives, and <laughs> yeah. the the whole politics behind it, the whole hey, can you come in because manager is going to go get a prostitute after work or whatever, or or be hungover right. the next day type that type of shit. I, I'm not saying we're saints or angels, but I'm saying like you know sometimes yeah, taking one for the team is absolutely necessary. But when it comes to like operational shit um it's tough man it's really tough um and and they got you saving like i'm the one who has to handle the shipments i'm the one who has to handle the money i'm the one who has to you know open or close it's fuck i just dropped some of my shit and here's here's uh, the thing about working so goddamn much is all right and i'm gonna i'm gonna ask you this question and being as honest as possible because i'm not in retail right now um i haven't been in a while but you can answer this honestly do you lose touch with current events or uh real-time shit like politics of course all right cool because i don't want to deal with it but have you have you been getting the, the the latest breaking news like the shit that's been going on well uh yeah well i know about some stuff i mean you know, my friends tell me that, you know, but I really don't, you know, myself, I just like, you know, close myself off in the world sometimes. You know? It's just either me going to work and coming home, going to work, coming home, maybe hanging out with you. Uh, you know, it's becoming rare now. I mean, you know, I mean, I, you have your, your family, so that's cool. Well, we haven't really hung but, out since the last time. Um, for, like, those, for those of you listening, Roger and I went on this spectacular fucking uh, beer hop. It's called the LA Beer Hop. Shout out to them. Um, yeah, but we hung out after that. We were there for your kid's birthday. Yeah, exactly. Oh no, shit. Yeah, that's so right. Like, yeah, I Fuck. was there, and that was like, like I guess the last time we actually got together and just you know, said what's up. <laughs> well, hey, we're all, we're all living lives. You know, we all taking we're all taking care of business. And yeah, but you know, I'm running the rat race. So hey, man. aren't we all, dude? I'm still chasing the fucking cheese too, man. Shit. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, for you, what happened to you was, first of all, bullshit, because they could have made better decisions, like we said before. But um, think of it as a blessing in disguise. At least you have some time that you can, you know, dedicate with your kid oh, or, absolutely. you know, with your family. Absolutely. I mean, I know you've been going, you've been taking some freaking commute to go to other places to work with people. Which is great because now your network's out there somewhere, so that's awesome. Yeah, and they're big but, ass uh, 
Yeah, but I mean, at least you're getting something, you know, to at least put some food in your mouth. That's just, just think about that for now. Oh, I mean, absolutely. something's going to happen. Something's going to be better. Something better is going to happen for you, dude. No, I know it. You're going to get it. Uh, for, for people who are listening that are not in the loop, uh, what Roger's referring to is I used to work, him and I went, attended a school by the name of Pinnacle College. And I'm not afraid to name drop it now because it's pretty much, it's, it's done, it's history. Um, I was the director of career services at this place. Um, and it was, it was a great run. Um, but what's funny is I, did I tell you the story, um, that at the time, Stephen Kimball, who was the, uh, admission, I mean, I'm sorry, the, um, who was me, my, my position that I wound up taking over. He told me that, Hey, you have about a year and a half, uh, before this the school either sells or closes. And I'm like, okay, so I just got hired to work here technically for a year and a half. Uh, And I took it thinking, you know, I had high hopes because, you know, I'm a graduate of that school. Um, I excelled. I was damn loyal to it. Um, I think we all were. And, and then just to see, see the way it went down, I'm just like, fucking shit, dude. Like, what were these guys thinking? Obviously they weren't thinking, um, I know it came in as a shock to you, right? Dude, I just saw the auction for the for the North Campus. Oh, that's and right. Was, they're they're and, saying they're auctioning off the North Campus. That's right because their last week is this week. Yeah, and I'm just like, fuck. It's it's acts it's absolutely over for them. It sucks. I mean, it it had it the the school had great 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 potential. The problem was, uh, its enrollment. Um, it it would take anybody, and that was that was its downfall. I mean, but well, the, but think about it. Downfall. Okay, I was one of its weak pillars. But. Put put your business hat on for a second, and say you were the owner of the school, right? What would uh-huh. you What would you do to market the school in the correct way to attract the part um, that particular um, type of individual who wants to? excel in this business it's not just it's for a lot of people we were just sound guys oh yeah they're the recording bands and whatnot i'm like no dude we do much more than that we record a podcast like we're doing right now uh we yeah. do sound design we're basically sound artists well i would go basically to uh educational institutes like schools public schools right uh uh events where i know where an audio person would excel at, like we should have probably set up a booth or some kind of thing at NAM uh, or GDC, uh, E3, of course, just, just, you know, work something out, you know, talk with people from, you know, either those AAA studios or those independent studios. Shit, there's a lot of people that, a lot of people that uh, this guy could have just, you know, set up meetings with, even have people walk in and say, Hey, you know what? Let's, let me look at your graduates or let's see, you know, what, what we got here, you know, cause there was so much talent and so much, uh, you know, I got to put this, uh, smart kids, graduates that could have done really good. I think that are probably doing well because they have the right connection. Um, also what I'm trying to say is, um, if I was like, you know, the guy in charge, I would have done all that. And, um, and probably, you know, I just had it in the back of my head. I was going to say, it, and I just totally brain farted on it. Uh, fuck, well, what, what, well, what about, the, what, what, what I mean? about marketing though? Um, now marketing? Here's, here's the thing is just to give you a, a you, a, a refresher and those, those people listening is okay. There, everyone's probably wondering like, where did they fuck up? Okay. Well, they fucked up. Uh, uh, in the mar- on the marketing side, um, they began to spend, um, or should I rephrase it? They began to waste a lot of money on things that, quite frankly, in this business, is not going to um, give anything in return. You know, you want a return on investment, basically. And yeah. they were doing things ass backwards, dude. I mean, I think the only thing they did right was they had an actual what was called a mix it up workshop where they mm-hmm. had, um, you know, at the time it was Dan Heck who was the, um, um, the program director. 
he mi- awesome. yeah he mixed a song uh on on the ssl console from beginning to end with about maybe 30 people in that in that studio a room dude and that equaled out of those 30 i think it was like 10 that enrolled that's a damn good ratio yeah no i mean now i remember who i wanted to say was about van head uh, at my graduation he spoke and something that he said really stuck with me and it makes me you know think of hey uh, I'm not just, you know, some regular person that took some kind of training or anything like that. We're, we're audio guys. We're sound uh, engineers, you know, I'm sound designer slash engineer. And what he said was, uh, sound engineers are the people that capture sound, capture, it's just capture sound, whether it be music, sound effects. We capture it and preserve it for two fucking, future people or, or to listen. Or someone fucking banging rocks, whatever, dude. Right. And no, but what we do is we capture it so that way we can archive it. We, we are the people like what, what I learned there and what he meant to say and what he actually said was we bring the science into sound and we bring in the music into it. Like we bring in the sound into that science. We learn about the frequencies. And we capture it so that way we can preserve it for future uh, generations to listen to. Ever since Benjamin Franklin created that, you know, wax cylinder and recorded sounds with that freaking thing with a needle on it, that's how it all started, you know? So what we do is, is pretty damn important. It may not be, you know, something that we can watch, but it's something that we can hear in future generations, you know, right, we might have, exactly. and, and what, and what we're doing is we are creating and mixing music or sound editing for either film, uh, artists and stuff. And it, it it's good to the ear. It makes, it, it hits, it just, you know, it makes you feel good. If it's not done right, then we don't, care about it well a lot of people don't understand like the importance of sound and a lot of i guess you can say a lot of aspects of life because to me my my whole theme uh my whole catchphrase my whole philosophy is sound is life yeah but it's just a part of life i mean mm, well, you what's your take on that? Let me you, can't I, I, it, exactly. like, you, you can't enjoy a movie blindfolded, but then again, you can't enjoy a movie uh, with, you know, earmuffs on because all you're doing is seeing or just hearing. You got to have both, you know? Yeah, it, exactly. It's I just mean, the way how we, how we, it's just the way how, you know, we as, well, as, you know, as humans, we have our, you know, how we, um, look at life or look at our regular days, our normal day by day with just, you know, our eyes and ears. Right. You know? I mean, I it, mean, it, it works it, in conjunction with a lot of the visual stuff. I really, I really came to accept that because for a long time I was kind of biased and angry about the whole, um, under appreciation of sound engineers, mixing engineers, re-recording engineers, Foley artists, sound designers mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I learned that it was the wrong attitude to begin with, you know. Um, but I mean, decoratively, dude, from being a sound designer and all that stuff to being an artist, dude, like we just I mean, I'm sure you got the news. Do we just lost um one um, of yeah. of probably a handful of iconic painters of sonical fucking beauty, man. And ah, dude, when I now that I mean, we'll get into the details in a bit, but when I first got the news, I'm like, okay, how did it fucking happen? What happened? Like, yeah, you know, all, all these questions start to brew in your head, and you just don't know what to make of it. But dude, Prince, rest in paradise, mm. man. He's gone. He's gone. Yeah, but no, I mean, he may be gone, but never forgotten. That's why again you know his music you know people like us to help 
preserve that uh, art artwork, um, he won't be forgotten at all. You know, and in, and 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 I want to say maybe fifty years from now, there's going to be new people, new artists coming out, and they're going to be using his music as well, just like how past artists have been doing with past artist music. You know? And and it's it's right. sad. I I am. I mean, I'm dude. I, as soon as I heard it, I, I, I messaged my boys and I said, dude, it's not gonna, it's not gonna rain anymore. It's no more purple rain. Purple rain is gone, dude. It's like, what? It's like, and is it confirmed? I'm like, yeah, it was confirmed. And it's like, it, it was just sad. I, I really felt it because, you know, to me, uh, I, you listen to other, other artists, other music out there. There's nothing like printed music out there. Nothing at all. You know, it's, it's got its own unique genre, you know, you, you can't really fit it into a specific kind of genre. It's, is it pop? Is it rock? Is it funk? Is it R and B? Like, no, it can't be any of that. It's, it's his own, it, he had his own, you know, sound. Yeah, he sure and, did. A lot of, and, a lot of things that, um, a lot of the qualities in music that a lot of people could not they couldn't achieve for the simple fact that his intention was not necessarily to make money. And this is just me ranting out on playing in a band or being an artist. And you know, this as well, Roger, if you have the sole intention of just wanting to make money with your music, you are not going to last period. Well, no, because you don't, you'll lack the passion for it. Exactly. Your passion is just to make money. It's not, you don't have the, the urge, uh, you don't have that, that gut feeling to say, I, I want to make something so people can hear my, my soul, my thoughts. You know, if you, if you're an artist and you paint and you have this picture in your head, you really want to put it out on paper or on a wall so people can see it and it's never going to be perfect, but either way, you're going to feel that it's there. The same thing with music. If you feel this inside you and you hear it you want to you want to play it and you want to make it out there you want to you want it for some for everyone to hear oh yeah and that's how right. he was that's how he was you know especially when he you know dedicated an entire album to his wife at one time oh, that, that one was rolling so okay so um yeah i mean i never even knew who prince was i was a little kid Little kid. Oh, I knew exactly yeah. who he was, though. I, I didn't. I didn't. To be honest with you, when I was a little kid, I was just all into, you know, cartoons, Transformers, all that great stuff, you know? But I remember I was, like, around eight years old, and I go to my uh, cousin's house, um, Ralph, Ralph, Ralph. Right. And uh, he introduced me to Purple Rain. It's like, Have you, you, you want to see this movie? I'm like, what is it? You know, because... Like I was looking at this poster that was up in his sister's room and it was purple rain, the poster of purple rain. And it was Prince in his motorcycle. You know, I'm like, well, that looks, I'm like, that looks weird. It's like, like this, like this guy on a motorcycle. So, oh, that's purple rain. It's like, really? It's like, you haven't seen it? I'm like, no. Well, let's watch it. So he put it on and I just started watching. It's like, okay. He just started explaining it to me, you know? What, is, what, what it was all about because he was a huge musician back then you know and um, and I think it was because of that I started appreciating more of the sound of the 80s you know uh, even though I, I was still a kid I didn't really understand you know what it was about but as I got older and when we were growing up you know as teenagers and we had our, our own little thing you know we had um, our, our, our groups and I started comparing them with those from what I was listening, what I would hear him play or hear my other cousin play. Right. It's totally different, but you know, with Prince, it, 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 his sound was the same throughout those decades. It, it may have, you know, changed differently, but he, it was still him. You know? Oh yeah. It, it Most was, definitely he, he had that gift that he could play all these instruments. And just, you know, make music with, with each and every single one of them, you know? And yeah, watching that movie, I was like, wow, 
What's trippy? Especially is- when the part where, 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 he, where he found his father's um, chest and it had all these songs oh, yes. that were written. I never forgot that like, scene. That was he was so trippy. pissed off at his dad. But then when he saw all this, he's like, you motherfucker, you're a musician too. And he never said anything about it. Yep. Yeah. And yeah, it was, it was, it was a freaking awesome, awesome movie. Awesome film. And he never even called himself like he was credited as Prince, but in the movie, he was just known as the kid. And it's like, you never, he never had a name in that movie. If you notice. If oh you, yeah, you know, that's okay, right. That's one thing I did he notice. He didn't it. have an actual character name. Kid. Yeah. Wow, it, 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 it was it was fun. It was, Wait, it was, did he write? Did he, did he write that movie? Did he what? Did he write the script? The 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 script to that movie or no? I, I honestly I don't know. I I really don't know. And that's one thing I'm, I need to fact check because yeah. yeah, that's a great fucking film, dude. Yeah, then from there, and then he moved on to doing the music for Batman. I was like, oh shit, doing some of the music on Batman. He, all the all the songs of Prince that we heard in Batman. They were all written for that movie. They were amazing. Yeah, I they were, never forgot know, that I one. Michael yeah. Keaton, Kim Basinger, and fucking um, Jack Nicholson. Jacko, yeah. dude. Yeah, that, and and yeah, that that was that was that was some good music there. Yeah, but point but point being, forth. dude, is like okay, we have all these people, celebrities, awesome musicians. They're they're dying, dude. And like Lemmy from Motorhead passed away. Um, Whitney Houston passed away. Uh, now Prince, you know, Michael Jackson, passed, like, dude, they're just like, you know, I, and here's where, yeah. there, here's where, I, you know, here's where I go back and think about the shit that we went through in, in the 90s. But what, go ahead. What were you going to say? Well, um, they, they, I think it's LA Times. They have a video of when Michael Jackson introduced Prince to the world for the very first time with James Brown. Oh, really? Yeah. Like, cause it was him and, uh, Michael Jackson with James Brown that was on stage or something. And Michael Jackson whispered into, uh, James Brown. He's like, Prince, who's Prince? He's like, who's that? Tell me to bring him up on stage. Let's bring Prince. And he came up on stage and he just started playing. And it was just amazing. You know? Wow. So, yeah, I didn't I mean, know that. Yeah, they, they actually, they put the video up, and it's on LATimes.com. It's all over. I think it's on YouTube now, so I think you can find it. You should watch it. It's pretty cool. Wow. Um, so, yeah. Okay. okay. I yeah, think I might going back that to up. that, I mean, yeah, with, you know, like you said, Michael Jackson, uh, you know, with the Houston, Prince now, it, it's, yeah, it, 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 these these are all iconic musicians that have you know left their mark, and not just uh, in their years of their hits or when they started, but you know it's it's an uh, iconic sound that is being uh, I put it traversed throughout the decade. You know, I mean, look at the Beatles, right? Everybody knows who the Beatles is. Oh, you know? of course. Even though they're you know. Because they have an icon, they they set their mark, they set their place. You know? After that, like Rolling Stones, who um, Leonard Skinner, um, Zeppelin, you know, these guys all did their thing. And going to the eighties, we have, and then everything changes. But you know, there's still you know music out there that people still listen to today because it's not because it's music that. Uh, reminds them of the times that were, but it's because it's sound that is, you know, pleasant to the ear, whether it's metal, rock, hip hop, jazz, it's, it's there, you know? And the only reason why I think it's, it hits us even harder, like you and me, because we are musicians, you know, we appreciate music more than the average, you know, I would just want to say the average person, someone who just listens to it, you know, but once you, once you actually sit down and play an instrument or it doesn't even have to be like, you know, something, you know, like a guitar or a piano, right. maybe anything, you know, but once you sit down and you just say, Hey, you know what? I, I just make some kind of music. 
you can really start to appreciate what you listen to because then you feel more uh, akin to that that sound, you know, instead of just listening to it and say, oh, um, yeah, this is, what's his face, thinking about this, this, and that, you know, and, uh, well, okay, so you know, the like, what his song is, but what does it make you feel, you know, when you hear it? It's just like an artist, when you look at someone's painting, like, it's not just, you know, random colors. It's like, what do you feel? What are you thinking about when you see this? The same thing with music. What do you feel? What are you thinking about when you hear it? You know, why does it make you, you know, feel this way? And no average person can tell you that because all they do is listen to it. With us, it would be like, wow, this, like, you can hear this and this part and wow, that's a great transition, you know, that, that really, you know, oh, there's a key change right there. Holy crap. This is, wow, this is an awesome, awesome piece. You know, we've done that dozens of times, you and I, when, when we listen to different bands, different, uh, you know, different types of sound. And with Prince, it, it was always something different, but we knew that it was, you know, the same kind of sound, but it was just different. Like every time he would play a different piece, it was always, would just make you say, wow, just wow. That was great. Yeah. Well, there's, there's a lot of musicians that, especially in our time. And I mean, I mean that in our time because we were nineties, you know, kids Mm -hmm. that really, from the moment you heard the first track on their on their CD at the time or tape, whatever we bought, uh, it made an immediate impact on how you felt at that moment. Um, for example, when I first heard um, Green Day's Dookie album um, yeah. from beginning to end, I was like, "Holy shit! This is something I could listen to forever." It was Dude, impactful. when we, I remember we went on the school bus one morning and we were, we were naming the tracks on their songs and we were calling those tracks like that one's mine, you know, cause that I identify with that. That one's mine, you know? And I think you picked, um, what was it? What was the name of that song? Well, having a blast. Uh, having a blast. That was you. Yeah, dude. That was my jam. That was you. Cause you were just, oh, dude, for some reason, you're just full of anger when you're a kid, but you managed to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, <laughs> well, those particular <laughs> lyrics, that the, whole really, time. I remember that shit. <laughs> the lyrics of that particular song was very symbolic to what I was going through at the time in that stage of my life. Um, but what that, that was just green day. Then I heard, uh, smash from offspring. Yeah. And that was yeah. a game changer. I was like, Holy shit, dude. Like, yeah. Uh, I think the first song, no joke, everyone's like, oh yeah, the first song I heard was Come Out and Play. I'm like, no, the first song I ever heard um, was fucking uh, Bad Habit. That's right. Bad Habit. Yeah. And I heard it on accident and it was during that breakdown when he starts, um, he starts singing the Drivers Are Rude part. The Drivers Are Rude, such attitude. Mm-hmm. When yeah. I show my peace, I am I'm like, my peace. I thought he meant to say like peace, like a peace sign. And I'm like, no, he's, he was talking about a gun. Talking <laughs> about like, a gun. Fuck, dude. Yeah. And, then, and I didn't even know that the song Come Out and Play was about kids bringing uh, fucking guns to school, dude. Guns to school. I didn't know that. Well, yeah. That's how oh, it was. Man. Yeah. You're underage. <laughs> yeah. 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 And there was a. Um, well, the, yeah, 90, the 90s we were, for us, dude, were very fucking. I mean, I know. Here's the thing is, okay. And I don't, I don't mean to pick at this generation of, 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 I guess. I don't want to call them kids because they're not kids, dude. They're not. Because you can't call a 25 year old a kid. Um, no. I guess people, humans. What? Young, are you young, talking young, about like the millennials? Uh, yeah, I'm young minds, basically. Because no, well, technically we're millennials too. You know that. 
but we are i don't know we're just different for some fucking reason but dude we were remember they identified our generation as generation x yeah we were, we were, we were supposed to be anything, the biggest failure according. in american history or some shit like that yeah, yeah. uh I, the the young minds nowadays like i i don't know if it's just because it's not it hasn't been they haven't been introduced to it but i remember when i was at the school um i played them um because they heard about george michael and wham uh-huh. uh and they heard the song faith so they were all about faith or whatever and I'm like, oh, cool. I'm like, yeah, I go, did you ever hear Limp Bizkit's, Limp Bizkit's rendition of it? It's pretty fucking brutal. And they're like, Limp Bizkit? I'm like, I go, yeah, they're not the greatest band. I go, but, you know, a lot of people, more people hated them than liked them. I go, but this rendition of that song yeah. was pretty badass. Oh, the minute I introduced them to that song and I, I played it for them, they were like, they were all over it. And I'm like, holy hell. And they kept asking me for, for new music, new music for them to discover. And I'm like, well, I'm like, I'm into a lot of the new stuff. I go, but I can dig into my library and show you what I, I kind of grew up with in the nineties. And I brought out, I brought out the offspring. I brought out the fucking, um, smashing pumpkins. I brought out the Foo Fighters, the Nirvana, the Metallica. Um, I think I even brought out, uh, some early corn, like the shit that, um, you know, like the first album that kind of, uh, uh, you know, blind, that song blind that ended up on the the street fighter animated series. Yeah. When they close the credits. Yeah. Um, and oh, no. yeah, yeah, dude, they, they <laughs> they were off. And I, I asked them sincerely, I'm like, you guys haven't heard of this stuff. I'm like, how could you not? And the answer was no, we're, they're too busy listening to whatever new trap song came out, whatever new EDM track came out. Um, and then they'll get wind of they at least they'll know the old classic rock and old old school heavy metal like Iron Maiden and Black Sabbath and shit like that. Uh, yeah. Old school rock and roll like Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix. They'll go. They'll at least know that. But there's a gap in between that they don't know about. Like they didn't know about fucking Sepultura. They didn't know about Slayer. Um, mm-hmm. I'm like God, Pantera. They didn't. They didn't even know about. Um, What's that group that you and I used to listen to all the time? Um, God, I'm drawing a blank here. Oh, Weezer. They didn't know right. about Weezer. Um, it was just a shock to me. And then, um, you know, then I would show them some of the stuff that Yuzo Koshiro was, was doing with Streets of Rage and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and the Kingdom Hearts soundtrack. And then I kind of, I then that's where I was kind of in their realm because it, I'm like, dude, this stuff came out a long time ago, but it's kind of it's kind of down you guys' alley right now because that's kind of all you guys listen to right now. Well, here's the thing, like the 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 kind of media entertainment that we have nowadays was nothing compared to you know when we were kids and when we were teenagers in the '90s. It's totally different from you know what it is now. Um, when you talk to somebody about, you know, oh yeah, you know, they're like, oh, there's this, there's this thing, you know, uh, you know, that they're talking about. I'm like, oh, but did you know that it originated from here? They're like, no. I'm like, what? Oh, you never seen this movie? I'm like, no, man, you missed out. It's like, oh, what is that? I don't know what you're talking about. You know, it's like, one, it kind of makes me feel like, you know, shit, dude. Am I really that old guy now that you know I used to laugh at when I was a kid? But no, because it was more of a media that, like, more of an entertainment for us when we were growing up. And it today, it's still, you know, entertainment, even for the new generation, because they'll enjoy what we saw, what we heard, because it was good, you know, whether it was a good movie or good music, you know, because back then, it freaking took talent for you to, you know, make it big in music with the shit that we have nowadays with like, you know, our IMAX or, uh, you know, home studios and stuff. We can, anybody can like, you know, you know, fix their voice or, you know, fix a track to make it pleasant to hear. 
But yeah, okay, it sounds great now, but why don't you perform that live? See how it sounds. It, it, it's things that we do, you know. If you don't have the talent, it, it doesn't work. And that's why, like, all those groups that you mentioned, they all had that gift. They all had, you know, some kind of musical education background, you know. They took the time to learn something. They took the time to learn how to uh, read music. And that's, that's another thing, you know. That's, you know, that's a whole other different language there. But once you can do that, you can start writing your own stuff, you know, and write it so that way someone else can play it, you know, not just, you know, hey, I can play it by ear. You know, it's, I'm, I'm going off point here a bit, but I, I understand what you're trying to say. It's like, you know, our generation today just doesn't understand, you know, what good is and what, you know, good will be. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, because um, one of the things that really, I'm not saying got to me, but kind of made me more inquisitive about today's generation and what um, what they like to listen to is, you know, I'm, I'm very familiar with music theory. I'm, I'm familiar with a lot of sonical elements about engineering, mixing, mastering, all that stuff. But one of the things that I noticed is a lot of the electronic dance music that they were listening to was very, it was very similar, kind of in the way like um, the whole rap metal thing going on in, in, in the 90s was. Yeah. Um, it had the same format. It had the same type of breakdowns. It had the same type of vocals. Um, and a lot of this EDM stuff doesn't have vocals. It's a lot of, I guess sound design, but a lot of the sound design is exactly the same, same patterns, same notes. Um, yeah. And I, okay. In order, and you have to take drugs in order to enjoy this music. That's the, that's the weird part. Yeah. That's the, that's and, the, that's the downfall. And everyone's like, Oh, it enhances the, what you're listening to. And I'm like, well, no. if it's enhancing, <laughs> it means it's giving you a false, reading of what you're listening to is that right and they're like right. and they get stuck like whoa no and i'm like no and i go the answer is yes i go because it's masking what you're listening to it's like masking a mix i'm like and they're like well what's masking a mix and i'm like using a preset like on your master fader or something to make your make your two track sound like your mix sound really spectacular and shit um, I'm like, it's not even your mix. It's just a plug-in or a piece of analog gear that just makes it sound really good, but it's not your mix. Yeah. And I'm like, so that technically it's like, okay, you're cheating. And yeah, you're cheating. Yeah. And, and they're there for hours, dude. I'm like, how the fuck? I'm like, dude, first of all, I'll take your plugs. God knows how long I'll be able to take the, the impact to go. Cause that's loud music, dude. You know, loud music for long periods of time. I mean, I don't mean to sound like an old man, but I'm just not gonna. I, I'm just speaking reality here. It's loud shit, dude. You need to protect your hearing. You have to protect your hearing. <laughs> wow. I hate to say it, but that you have to. I mean, I. No, I it, treasure. Well, I treasure my hearing it, more than ever now. It's true. Yeah. Well, of course. You know, with, with me and you, yeah, because we know. We now know. It's like, oh. Uh, this frequency fuck you up, you know, mess up your hearing bad. Shit may not happen like that, but in the long run, you're going to start hearing this shit and then you won't be able to hear it at all. Yeah. And yeah, people and, like, and like, everyone and knows that dude. loud music. Like, so how's that ringing in your ear? You know? Right. Oh, it, tends, it comes and goes. Oh, well, it's going to stick around for a long time. If you keep listening to that shit. And oh. everyone knows the louder it gets. Yes. The better it may sound. But just remember, you're raising everything else that comes with the the Fletcher Munson curve, as everyone probably doesn't know what I'm talking about. But um, everything gets boosted. Everything is so goddamn loud. If you take an SPL meter, it's probably like over a hundred. Oh shit! The little clip, like crazy. Yeah, it's it's yeah. not. But. I, I don't know. I don't know what, what to what to, to what to make of it because I mean I, I yeah I'm a fan of some of the stuff that that comes out, but for the most part I just don't 
I mean, I'll listen to it because I, I, I'm willing to listen to it just to see what I can pick at. I mean, I try to find more things right coming out of whatever I'm listening to than wrong. Right. But I, it, it, it never works out that way. I'm just like, okay, well, what was the po- whole point of that fucking song? It was like two words throughout the whole thing. Nothing about it impacted me. Nothing. And, you know, back in, you know, with the music and going back to what we originally, you know, brought this up is, uh, you know, with, with Prince's music, it, it made sense, even though his lyrics were, were strange, but we, you understood what he was talking about, you know, and he put that into music and put that into words. And it was just like, wow, cool. You know? You yeah. hear shit like this today. There's stuff like you know, artists. Some artists today may try to do that, but even some know, of like, the heavy metal bands that I listen to, I'm just like, what is this? Yeah. And you yeah, know, there, there's heavy exceptions. Heavy metal, man. I'm fuck. freaking the heavy metal. It's 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 great. You know, I mean, you, you, it's not really so much as to you know, fast drums, loud guitars, and you know, screaming or or shit, but it's also music. And let's, let's talk about somebody now. And I know that you're falling, that you fall in love with them because it's good music, even though we don't understand what the fuck they're saying, because it's a whole other different language, but baby metal is kicking butt. And ever since they did, they finally hit the U S shores officially, you know, people are starting to pick up, pick up on that sound, you know? And it's, Fuck, they're, they're the most interesting fucking thing that I've seen in a long time, dude. <laughs> Since Slipknot, yeah. dude. Since Slipknot. And Slipknot had yeah. nine fucking psychopaths, dude, on stage with jumpsuits and masks. Yep. Now there's three little Japanese girls, dude, up front with a badass band in the background. Yep, with these crazy looking guys in the back, yeah. Yep. But... It's just not, it's, it's the music. It, I don't care about the image. No, I really don't. I don't care about the image at all. If, if, if the music sounds great and it's something that, you know, I'm not going to like switch over. Like, oh, you know what? I already got tired of it. You know, it gets boring. You know, music can last long and be really good. Or it can be boring. If that's the case, then you need to cut it short because then you lose interest in your exactly. audience. But these people, with, with, with them, it's like, shit, it's, it's music. Because this, this, the, the, their lead singer, she's got a damn good voice. Oh, she's an even amazing, though I don't, she's like, an amazing I don't vocalist, the, dude. She I don't is. understand like, you know, the language completely. I may understand a few phrases here and there, but it's like her voice is just amazing. Oh, okay, with. I know whoever's listening right now is probably saying, what the fuck does Roger know about music? And I won't speak for Roger, just so you guys know who he is and what he does. I'm not saying he's fucking Bach or fucking Mozart. But, Shut up. but Roger, can you please enlighten the audience of, give them, you don't have to give them the Cliff Notes version of what you've done and what the experience you have with music is, but tell tell the listeners what you've done, uh, where, where it started and where it ended right now. With like with music, yeah, like, what I've done with because it? you're the very, you're, you're the reason why I got into music in the first place. Oh, well shit. Did it start when I was a kid? You know, right. Fuck. Ever since, uh, ever since I picked up that, uh, little recorder, a little flute thing. I miss Rich- miss Richardson's class. Right. Not even that. It was before that. That was it was back when I was in elementary school, freaking first grade, second grade. You know, I saw this and it's like, how much is this? You know, like I had my I asked my mom to buy it for me. It's four bucks, and I just wow. I, I was just blowing into it, and then um, uh, the teacher in that in uh, in that little music class actually started saying, "This is how you play it, okay?" And I just like right. follow the little follow the little dots on this paper here. And it wasn't music notes at all. It was just like telling you how to finger it. It's like, oh, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. And it, it, it's not only with that, but there was, there was, you know, musicians in my family, you know, like, uh, again, going back to my cousin Ralph, you know, with his band and stuff. Right. You know, he had, I've always, every time I would go over to uh, his house, 
you know, there's, you know, big old drum set, you know, there, like, and it was huge to me because I was a kid, you know, and guitars and stuff, and I couldn't even pick it up. Right. My, my cousin, my cousin Willie, uh, God rest his soul, uh, you know, Bill's uh, son, he was a musician too. He had like, you know, he was a guitar player as well. And, you know, and I got into that, you know, then my, like, from then on, I tried to stay into music while I was growing up, going to school. In school, I tried to get myself involved in the music program. You know, and this was your elementary it, years, right? This is what? Your elementary years? This was uh, after, this was a year before Eastmont Junior High School. Okay, you know? okay. So, uh, going into Eastmont, going into Junior High School, yeah, I, I, I said, hey, I want to go into music. I want to go into band. And uh, it was a beginning band, and, you know, I started with the trumpet. And from there, I started learning how to read music, you know. And then you moved into the neighborhood a year later. And again, you know, I, not only was I into music, but I, I freaking loved video games, you know. And I even told you the only reason why I freaking became your friend is because I wanted to go over your house and play on your Sega Genesis. Which is the meanest <laughs> thing I've ever told you. <laughs> I was like, fuck, dude. So like, yeah, Sega Genesis. Can I come over and play? Okay, sure. And then you had your stupid keyboard, and we were just fucking, you know, mess around with that. Oh, you know, the fucking little, Casio. Little, the Casio, dude. That shit wow. was great. You know, we would fuck around with that. And then we started going to school, same school and stuff, and I was doing the music. You were, you were a freaking jock, dude, during that time. You were jock, plain and simple. Yeah, right? you, I, kind I, of I playing the snare. Well, yeah. Well, no, dude, you started later. Uh, I think you were, I think we were like in our last year at that school before we were going to go yeah, to high school. Yeah, I was school. an eighth grade transfer. Yeah. So you were like, you didn't really start getting into it until, yeah, you started, you know, beating on the drum. And from there on, I think the reason why you got into it is because you heard your neighbor on the corner of the street, probably. This is why I was thought. Oh, like, that dude, that girl was a psychopath. It. Yeah, because it was his drum set and his music, and you just hear it every time you drive past. Like, dude, and you were living right next to him. It's like, okay, that's probably why he's getting into it, you know? But with me, back to me, okay? Fuck you, back to me. <laughs> wow. Um, uh, yeah, because that's how I am, right? Yeah. Shut up. Yeah. Anyways, um, I, I just stuck with the music program, and to me, it, 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 it made a huge impact, you know, because it gave me something that I can focus on. I wasn't, I'm not the kind of person that, you know, uh, I was into sports. Okay. I'm not a very physical person. So yeah, to all you listeners out there, I'm fat. Okay. You can laugh now. So yeah. And, and fuck all you, but oh well. Uh, and thank you for listening. I think, uh, you, I think you just struck a, a immediate popularity with everyone right now, dude. Okay. Okay. Whatever. So yeah. Um, and not only did I, you know, like I said, I like music with that, but, you know, I enjoyed gaming as growing up. And that's a whole other different subject. We'll probably touch base on that some other time because, you know, it's pretty late. But um, with the music, uh, you learn more and more about how it works. You know, you learn more and more how it sounds. And I highly recommend to any parents that are listening, get your kids an instrument. I don't care what it is, you know, if they show interest in something like, Oh, is that a, a flute? Is that a violin? What is that? You know, do it, you know, just, you know, let them try it out. Don't force it upon them. Cause my parents, my parents were, I'm first generation born in this country. So my parents were, you know, they were, you know, not they never grew up around here so they don't know like what life in the united states or in la or california is like right so they never really said oh you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna play a piano and i want you to be you know concert pianist or whatever or you're gonna learn how to play the violin no they, n my parents never really pushed anything on to me to say you need to aspire to do this to them it was just go to school study, get an education. Okay. That was it. Well, 
I want to learn music. I want to do this. Let me try this. And yeah, I got into it. I got into it since, like I said, since freaking third grade, fourth grade, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. We, you know, you and I, junior high school. And then high school, I kind of, you know, like, I didn't get into it because uh, my music teacher didn't submit my application to Narumi, oh, the music wow. teacher back then. So it didn't work out. And that's why during my freshman year at high school, mm-hmm. it, it, was, it went to shit because, you know, I was hanging out with, like, you know, with the wrong friends, you know? And the reason why I didn't hang out with you is because, oh, you know, you're a football player, you're the jock, and you know how it is in high school. It's just like prison. You got your clicks, and you want to hang out with who, who you can, you know, feel safe with, and you, you can, you know, have fun with. And I never, I never actually thought that was, like, okay for me to go and, and sit at the jock table. Yeah. So shit happened, and I had to transfer. I left Shore High School. Freshman, I had to finish my freshman year at Pioneer in Whittier because my cousins were going there. Right, I remember that. Yeah. And that's when I got back into music. And uh, I don't know if I ever told you this, but it was during my math class, you know, my algebra class, and there was this guy sitting in front of me, and he was wearing a t-shirt that Pioneer Jazz Band. Like, like, jazz band? And I looked at him, hey, dude, you're in the band? He's like, oh, he's like, yeah, yeah. Oh wow! I used to be in the band at my my other school. So, oh really? What is you do play? I told him, "Oh yeah, I'm a saxophone player because I got more into the sax. But I transitioned from trumpet to saxophone. And I go, I play bar- I like to play the baritone sax. Like, oh, he's like, oh, we need one in our in our band. Oh, for real? It's like, yeah. It's like, here, come on, let me like let me introduce you to our music teacher. And this so that was, was Mr. Z, right? Uh, no, it's uh, Mr. Z. Z. V like, like V. V like Zorro. Zorro, yeah, Mr. Z. I didn't say V. Mr. Zambrano. So everybody called him Mr. Z. Yeah. And he told the story at our senior dinner, how I came up to him. He's like, he's like, yeah, it was just like this, this weird kid, you know, he, he, he looked strange to me. He was just making fun of me, but he comes up to me during the basketball season. And sure enough, I did. Like the, he, he was just explaining it the same way I remember it. He was in the gym. He was sitting down like preparing for that night's game because, you know, the band plays during the, the game. And I go, uh, so yeah, I, I heard you need, uh, this, type, like uh, this type of musician. He's like, Oh, you play? I'm like, yeah. Can I join? Well, you have to talk to your counselor about that. Like, Oh, okay. Cause you know, stupid freaking kid didn't know what to do. Set it up a year late. The next year, my sophomore year, I got into it and that was in the band. And I started doing marching band, and yes, 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 I became a band geek. Yeah, I was a band geek in high school. Yay, you know? And people would be like, look at them marching on the football field. Well, we would see, like, you in your football uniform playing around, and we'd be like, what are these guys in these stupid pads doing on the band field? You know? (laughs) We would throw it back at you guys. Yeah. But yeah. After that, I just, you know, it, it, it stuck with me. It stuck with me. And that's why, like, you know, from there I took music appreciation, music comprehension. Because Mr. Z uh, threw it on me because he saw that I had the passion for it. Because I, was, I would freaking stay after class just so I could practice. And you know what? When I got into the jazz band and they did, like, those solos and stuff or doing the quartet. It was great, you know, because I just, I love the fact that I get to play for people and me practicing and rehearsing so much, and it sounded good. It felt great that not only did I make myself, my, myself feel good by playing this music, other people are enjoying it and feeling good or just appreciating it or, because, you know, it, it, it's being played well. And that's why when I hear music today and it's like, do you guys like this? Like, it sounds like shit or this is, this sounds bad to a point or it sounds good, but then it gets bad. And they're like, what do you know about music? What do I know about music? Shit. 
Why don't you tell? Why don't you sit and listen? And tell me what a freaking arpeggio is or a triplet. You know what a fermata is. You know this. If they won't tell you jack shit. You even go to somebody, an actual who plays this music, and if you were to ask them, you know, hey, you think you can sight read this for me real quick? They'll probably like look at you and you know say, get this guy out of here. You know. But back to after high school, you know we started hanging out more and, you know, I saw that you were, you're peaking like your peak into music. And it's like, shit, dude, like, do you really like this? I'm like, yeah. And I remember when you started like, you know, playing the guitar and you would play by ear. And I didn't remember how you would always go online and try to download tabs. I'm like, why are you downloading tabs? He says, well, well, because I couldn't read he didn't fucking know. sheet music. <laughs> I couldn't read because you, you couldn't really. I'm like, dude, learn how to play chords at least, you know? Yeah, I, I don't know how to read guitar chords myself. Okay, I don't. Even to this day, I can. I, I would look at it and I would like, I would just see dots. But you give me something where I can read in a treble or bass class. Okay, all right, I can tell you. Okay, this, 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 and that. All right, now let's see if we can play it. I could do that. Yeah. And now I know you can, because I know you took the time to learn. Well, and it helped a lot. I, as soon as you told me to do it, then it helped a lot. And I, I got a better comprehension, a comprehension as to what to do and how to arrange, how to arrange things. Um, so it doesn't sound it, messy. But here, here's the crazy thing. I, when going back to pinnacle, uh, Shit, dude, I felt like, uh, you know, a little fish in a big pond and a big lake. Because with Dan, not Dan Heck, but Dan Reynolds, what he showed me, I was like, wow. I was, wow. Like, they teach this in, in, in a higher level? Like, wow. Orchestration? Holy shit. You know, I still have the chart that he gave us to what instruments complement other instruments when you want to write music. So it, 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 and it, and it's great because it, it really helps you out, especially when we're going to write music on our you know computer here using the VST, like work off this chart. So that way you can have something to, you know, put you in the direction when you want to have uh, something that sounds good sonically and acoustically. And it, those frequencies just meld and it, it, it activates that, that, uh, that euphoric dopamine in your brain without, you know, any type of, Oh, absolutely. You know, drug, you know? So it's like, that's how it is with music. When you know, it's good music, you know, like, wow, you, feel you just it. said dopamine. And I think every other youngster that's listening to this, they're like dope. They're, they're thinking about doing some kind of fucking drug right now. No, hell no, dude. Our body produces our own drugs. Exactly. Is, For those of you listening, is, dopamine is a natural, natural high that comes from your brain. Yeah, your brain secretes it because um, it makes you feel good. You'll, you'll feel it a lot. You want to know when you can feel it the most? During sex. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about, dude. I'm a virgin. Oh, yeah. You're, yeah, sure. Okay whatever. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, when you brought up that subject with kids, you need to do drugs to enhance the feeling, to enhance the sound. It's like, no, you're just hallucinating. You're, you're just fucking, you know, you're hallucinating and you're picturing this music the way you want to see it. You're not picturing it the way the artist wants you to see it. And back to Prince, that's how what he did. That's what he did. He painted with sound, you know? And in what, what we learned at Pinnacle as well, and what I learned is how to paint a picture with just sound. Because here's the thing. Now, I remember when I went back and said, uh, you can't enjoy a movie if you can't hear it or, or see it. But going to what you said, sound is life. Yeah, I agree with that. because. Our brains are incredible on telling us what we're hearing. 
you know? You hear, like, the engine of a car start, then immediately, you know, oh, that's a car. Well, the the art of the whole interpretation of what you listen to is been or well, has been um it's been it's been around for 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 eons man and you know it took for me to 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 meet a blind person um that's an engineer of course but needs assistance because of course you know they're they're visually impaired and they need a they need someone to ne- help them ev- navigate but they hear things that we do not fucking hear, dude, because of, of our visual distraction. Uh, well, because we don't, we rely upon our senses. But when, like they said, when you take away one of our senses, the others have to adjust to work for that one. And uh, the human brain can only hear up to, what was it, 20,000 20, hertz? Right. Frequency, so we can listen. We can hear from what is it, a thousand to twenty thousand? Right, it? right. But there's people out there that can actually hear higher than that, and unfortunately, most of them are blind. You know, but that's just something to me. That's just you have a gift. You know, use it. And if they can, I mean, shit, dude. What's his name? Beethoven was deaf, but yet he made music. Yeah, that is and a now, fucking trip to this day. I, I always Charles, wondered. You know, Ray Charles, Stevie Wonder, they're blind and they make great music. Yeah. But I think, I think with, you know, if, with a deaf person, you know, like Beethoven, I think it's because he felt. Because not only do we hear it, we can feel it. You know, if you feel music, resonate. Not just through our heads, but through our bodies, you know. And it's not just—it's not just because oh, that's just a lot of bass. No, no, no. You can feel it when you hear it, but you can feel it resonate through you. And that's something that sound has always been doing to us. Precisely. You know, we react to it. We react to what we hear. You know, because it either makes us feel good or it frightens us, or it makes us feel angry, or it makes us, you know, it, it makes us feel, you know, sad or happy. It, it will always affect us. Yes. You know? And if, if, if we can teach our generation of, you know, youngsters how to, you know, appreciate just to hear and just to feel what you hear, then you can actually start, you know, I got to put it, taste testing the music that's out there. It's like, what do you think about the new groups? Well, you just don't get it because you don't, like, they would tell you that. You guys just don't get it, you know. Well, I'm like, well, of course I don't get it because I don't understand why you can listen to this and not, you know, say, well, let me listen to something else, you know, or... Because you're, they're, they're already, you know, just molded. They see it and they think, oh, wow, that's cool. And then they're molded to it. And then they start to, you know, like lemmings, follow it. I, I mean, and it's always been like that in generations, but it's been like that for, you know, like I said, for past generations. The old music sounds crappy to young kids. New music sounds, uh, you know, strange to old people. But... That's because these people never, you know, experience music in a different level, like how we have. Right, you know? exactly. You know, so that's why with me, it's like, shit, dude, I can, I can understand this. I like this. And I remember one time when we were at your house and we were listening to music, it's like, dude, you ever heard of, uh, you know, Chuck Mangione? Like, who? And I sent you the music and you started listening. And you're like, wow. Wow. No, I remember okay. you lend me hey, uh, you know, one wow, of the CDs that I never gave back. Yeah. Uh, yeah fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, then I started getting into music. Like, you know, I would, I would start more and more for me. I would, like I said, I was a gamer. 
and I would start getting into the music soundtracks of these games. I'm like, wow, this, this, this is nice. You know, it sounds great. Oh, I like this. This is a cool little sound. You know, we would start, I would, you would start, you know, to reminisce when you start hearing these, these music from games and stuff. And, and then I started getting more into anime and there, there was like other types of music. And, um, I think one of the, to me, one of the coolest composers from Japan, uh, because of what she did in most of her anime with Yoko Kano, she did a lot of great stuff. And, and one of the best, one of her greatest was with, uh, um, Cowboy Bebop. It's anime yes. series. She works with the seatbelts. These, the seatbelts. Yeah, I, don't know if you guys I, I discovered heard of them. them because of that fucking cartoon, dude. Well, because of me, dick, right? Why? Well, I, I wasn't going to give you immediate <laughs> credit, but okay. No, no, no. Okay, I know. But yeah, I discovered them because of this anime. But, you know, the seatbelts out there, for all you listeners out there, uh, awesome band during the 90s, you know, late 90s, early 2000s. Great, great. Like, you know, uh, to me, they were like, Chicago of, you know, the 21st century, late 20th, 21st century. If you don't know who Chicago is, then talk to your parents or talk to your grandparents. Or talk to somebody from Chicago. Chicago yeah. Or talk to the shut up. Exactly. But Chicago was an awesome, you know, uh, band that brought in the rock, the, the rock from that generation, what we know as classic rock with, you know, the vocal, with the uh, uh, wind instruments of, you know, your classic uh, orchestra or, you know, regular band. Because the way it worked is like, you know, there was big bands back in the 40s and 50s. We had jazz and we had bebop, uh, rock and roll during the 50s and 60s. There was just more and more rock and roll. But we started, we started to, during that generation, we started to have music that didn't have a lot of, you know, horns or wind instruments within you know the music during the i want to say i guess it was during the 70s because it was before my time and the reason i i got in like started listening to chicago was because again my music teacher in high school he had a bunch of lps just sitting there and he had the, the record player and we can just listen to whatever we wanted and like, what the fuck is this chicago let's put this shit on and the song that got me into them was 25 or 6 before. That was the track. Which is your and karaoke it, hit. No, my karaoke hit is Saturday in the Park. So shut up. Oh, okay. Yeah, you see? Yeah, and, uh, uh, okay, now. yeah. But yeah. 25 or 6 before, if you were to hear it, you'd just hear horns blazing. You would hear the drums. <laughs> you'd hear, you know, it's great. It was awesome. And you just don't hear that anymore. And then all of a sudden, I started listening to the seatbelts with Cowboy Bebop. And it's like, holy shit, they're bringing back like this Americana sound with, it's mixed in with like a type of a spaghetti western type of soundtrack with jazz and big band. Dude, this is awesome, you know? That was great. And the only, the only American bands that ever did something like that during, you know, the 90s and early 2000s was um, Squirrel Nut Zippers. They, I don't know how many, I think they only dropped, what, two or three albums? But they did something cool because they were more like a little jazz type, you know, hey, okay. But they didn't have a lot of that uh, electric rock or metal sound with it. But they did their thing with the music. Um, people were all into, right. um, you know, they were trying to get back into the swing band type thing. What was the name of that one group? Uh, Squirrel Nut uh, Zippers? Shit. Not Squirrel Nut Zippers. The other one that uh, they were uh, shit. Ah, uh, fuck, I forgot their name. They were, but anyways, they, they tried to do the, with the horns and everything. Uh, I forgot this. Oh man, you got me. Oh, I know Squirrel Nut Zippers was one of them. And one of them, but. The other, there was another group just like them. Real the, Big Fish. Real yeah, big there fish. you go. There you go. Those Real Big Fish. Yeah, was there was, uh, big fish. Save Ferris. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no doubt yeah. was doing it for, for, for a couple of years too. Then they changed their sound. Yeah. Yep. But yeah, I mean, like I said, check out the seatbelt, 
check out Cowboy Bebop. Uh, it's a great anime. I think to me it was one of the greatest animes ever. And when I, when I talk to like, you know, my coworkers, um, they're all young and they're still watching anime and they'll be like, Oh, this, this and that. I'm like you guys don't know anime until you watch this. Cause the only reason why I really, really enjoy it, not only was the storyline on it was great, but the music, it was the music that kept me, you know, listening and watching. And that's what good music does. It, it keeps you sitting. It keeps you from changing your uh, Pandora or Spotify or whatever you use, you know, to listen to music nowadays. It, that's, that's what it takes. It takes talent and it takes, you know, some kind of appreciation to not just, you know, be a good musician or be a good musician, but just to be a good listener, you know, because then you can just sit and, and just talk with people and say, yeah, you know, I listen to this and I listen to that. Oh yeah. That's a, that's a really good sound. You know, they have, all, but did you know that it was based off this and that like, no. And then you start getting into it. It's, it, it, it's it's what we don't, you know, show the kids nowadays. Because, dude, to me, it's with kids nowadays, to them, it's all about Call of Duty. That's it. Call of Duty or Grand Theft Auto. Shit. Dude. And, yeah. It, that goes to show uh, that you've been working at that place for too long. Yeah, but, okay, so... Yeah, I, I work with games. Big book. I'm a game sound designer, all right? So I'd like to see, you know, I like to be around what I, what I would enjoy, you know? And it's not, it's not like, you know, oh, it, it must suck if you're complaining about it. No, it, it's just like a really, any other regular old job. Everybody complains about their job, you know? Unless you're, unless you're up in the high tier where you're making six figures uh, of something, uh, you, you enjoy it, but there's every single career or job out there has its, its pressure points and you'll be stressing. That's how it is. You know, so you just want to surround yourself with what you enjoy. And that's what I'm doing. You know, I'm there because I enjoy it. I enjoy games. I enjoy music. I enjoy, you know, just hanging around and listening or playing to what I think is good, what I enjoy. Yeah. Nowadays, kids enjoy whatever. Okay, that's cool. You know, I could probably relate to it because I've done it myself with my past stuff. But the, the thing about it is if we don't learn from our, you know, our past history, and that's with music, that's with movies, Pop culture, plain and simple. If we don't learn who these these people are or were, we can't appreciate what's up and coming. You know? And again, we're going to go back to our original subject. If, kids, if the youngsters nowadays don't know who Prince was, don't know anything about his music, then they're not going to understand, you know, what influenced these this new sound that they're listening to, you know, every musician has, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, they've been inspired an inspiration by someone, you know, and Prince did that. I'm sure he did that with, you know, uh, a lot of the groups from, you know, that were from early 2000s to now, you know, he had his own flair to it, but now I'm sure he, just like how he was influenced with, uh, uh, I believe, uh, I think his dad. His dad was a real life musician, and um, I, I may be wrong. I don't know if I'm right. I mean, correct me on that. But he had his influences and his inspirations, and he took the time to learn. He took the time to, you know, get better at it, and then he took the time to make it his own sound, so that way people can see it and feel it, you know? And that's how it is with musicians. And that's how it is with people who, for like, for those of, for like, for, for those of musicians that are out there, if you're listening to this, 
you know, hey, my advice to you is just, you know, put it out there. You know, take the time to, you know, polish it up, polish your sound up, and then just put it out there. There's going to be uh, people that are going to hate it. There's going to be people that are going to like it. There's going to be people that are going to be like, whatever, you know. But what's important is if you feel that you know that you're making people feel good about your sound and that they're enjoying it, then keep doing it. Cause it's working, you know? And I remember I told this to, uh, when we, when was your, I think it was your 32nd birthday. We were in Alhambra and, uh, Rudy, uh, was there. Uh, Espinoza, if he's listening to this, Hey dude, what's up? Uh, but yeah, he was just like, he was feeling down about his music. And I'm like, Are well, you talking about Rudy? have you let, yeah, remember him? Yeah. Come on. I he was there for your birthday that night. Yeah. And we started talking about it because we were like, yeah, dude, you know, I'm telling him this. Yeah, I'm doing this because I want to get into, you know, engineering, sound, audio, and all that stuff. He's like, really? So then that means you might, he was just like asking me, so that means you have like an ear for music? Well, I guess. I'm like, yeah, I mean, I, I, I can appreciate it. Well, can I play you something? And he's like, okay. I was like, I was like, okay, sure. So he takes his phone out and I started listening to it, you know, to his headphones. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, who is this? He goes, oh, that, that, that's mine. I said, you wrote this. He's like, yeah. Like, has anybody else heard it? He's like, well, not really. Cause he was so hesitant about getting it out there. I'm like, dude, this is good. Like, well, what's wrong? Like, do you feel that it's bad? He thought that it was bad. You know, but that's the thing is you don't know if it's good or bad unless somebody actually tells you. Yeah. But even if they tell you it's good, are you going to take that with a grain of salt or are you going to take it as a compliment? Well, I guess with him, it, I, it motivated him because from what he told me after that, I guess, well, his sister talked to you about it and you were telling me that, yeah, he started, you know, doing more. And I'm like, hey, okay, that's great. You know, I mean, the thing is, you can't take the bad criticism as something bad. Take it as a challenge. Shit. That's how it was with me, with my, with my work, with like the sound projects that I did. Like, so is it good? Is it bad? Well, it's, it's good here, but it's kind of bad here. Okay, what's, what's the bad? Like, I want to know. Is there any way you think I could correct it? Or what can I do to make it sound better or to make it not bad? That's the challenge, you know, because never take bad criticism or, uh, you know, negative, uh, you know, criticism or negative thoughts from people bad. Don't ever take it. Like, because remember, haters are your biggest fan. They're going to hate you at, at least they're listening, right? And they're always going to talk shit. Who cares? They're listening. So just make them listen to what you want them to hear. If it sounds bad to them, it's because they want it to be bad because they hate you or they don't like it. But if it sounds good to other people, you're doing something right. But as for the bad criticism, the bad negative stuff, like, again, take it as a challenge. Okay. Like, hey, all right. Maybe I can just make it better, you know? And that's what I did with you. Remember when, like, your first music and stuff, like the first song? I'm like, sounds good, but uh, I don't like this here. And, or oh, this can be, you can change this. And you're like, how? Well, try this. And it worked, right? You know? I know, I know with, when I helped you out with your music, it got better to some degree. And then afterwards, it's like, dude, you're just, you're just doing good shit now. It's like, wow, I think you just started to understand more and more and how, how, you know, your music should sound and how it can affect others, not just yourself. Yeah. And, and that's what, and that's what I believe music should be. That's what I believe that musicians nowadays should try and understand. It's like, how would affect, how will it affect others besides yourself? You know, it's like cooking. You know, it, there's a recipe for, for food out there. 
and how it should how it should be prepared. But you can always change it up and make it different to your liking. But will others like it? How will it affect others? You know? Maybe they'll like it, maybe they won't. But the fact is that you made it your own or you made it from scratch and it's yours. It's your piece of art. And there will always be somebody judging it. There's right, always exactly. going to be somebody, there's always going to be somebody out there saying it's bad or good. But to be honest, if it's, if it's good, you know, that's because people who know music say that it's good. If it's bad, well, the majority of people are going to say it's bad. You know, it doesn't make them feel good or, you know, everybody, everybody. I'm not, and then this is just not just, you know, people that are musicians, people who know music, but I'm talking everybody. When they hear something that they don't like, you cringe and then you just walk away. You know, it's just like tasting food. It tastes bad <laughs> because it's bad. Just spit it out, you know. The same thing with music. We 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 enjoy what what makes us feel good, what tastes good. Yeah. And if it tastes bad, change it up. Try to make it better. Yeah. That's that's. I think that's all I can you know say about that. Because that's a whole other subject. That's a whole other thing. We're veering off something else. Um, the whole point was to get an insight and retrospect on what happened with previous uh, generations of music and now what we're experiencing now. Uh, but bottom line is you bring a lot of perspective as to what what used to be and what is now and what potentially can be. That's what yeah. that's the main thing about me. And, and, and the, the whole thing about this whole Prince thing is, yeah, it, it's a big loss, dude, but he didn't come out with another album, which... A lot of people argue like, well, what, is, what does it matter? I'm like, yeah, it doesn't matter because he's he already had a lot of spectacular fucking music, dude. You know, we'll talk about it more in another podcast, but I, I mean, I hate to quit on this now. But for those of you listening, this is the Ed Namrock podcast. And I had my buddy and my fucking brother on the podcast, Roger. So yeah. Ron, oh, check this out on YouTube. Um, I'll have it uploaded on Facebook as well. Uh, facebook.com yeah. forward slash nam rock usa that's n-a-m-r-o-k usa and uh youtube is the same thing just look it up just real quick i just wanted you to think about one thing how he died you know his song let's go crazy yeah you were you know you know the lyric about not letting the elevator bring us down we found him dead in his elevator <laughs> wow i started thinking about that it's like wow that's yep wow absolutely true man so yeah, well, food for thought, guys. Crazy. Listen to that shit. Trip out on that, people. Huh. Trip out on that. We'll see you guys soon. All right. Good shit. Thanks for having me, man. All right, bro. Late.